actually being able to relax instead of getting wound up. So it's a huge benefit. Selfishly, it's a huge benefit. And what I like very much indeed is that we are all brothers and sisters. We all are on the way to caring and looking after and being uh, kind towards each other. It's in the way that we are taught to address each other and from there on it grows. So I find there's a lot of respect, there's a lot of dignity um, given to people, um, a lot of uh, creative powers are released because you're more relaxed and less on what I call the rat race on the treadmill. You've got more time to actually think more creatively and make your life better. Okay, let's discuss this topic because this is very, very interesting and this is really on the tips of the tongues of a lot of people and it actually stops some women and men from entering into this beautiful way of life. So let's not pretend that we don't know what people are saying and thinking and let's get right into it. Someone may say, well, isn't it true that in Islam the woman only gets half of the inheritance of the man? And I would say to you, yes, this is true. And somebody may say, aha, I told you. Okay, let's take that and let's put it on the side. And someone else may come and say, is it not true that uh, the man can have up to four wives? And I would say, yes, this is true. And they say, aha, I got you again. This is oppression. And I would say, take it and let's put this one on the side. Now, let's discuss the role of the man in Islam and let's see if this actually really is oppression okay first and foremost the man is it is it is incumbent upon him obligatory upon him to take care of his wife and his family to spend upon them to make sure they have adequate clothing adequate food adequate shelter that's all the responsibility of the man now you might say, well, what if the woman works? Did you know that in Islam, if a woman works and makes a lot of money, and yes, women do work in Islam, they can work in Islam. This is not an issue, provided that they work in a good, clean, and halal, or permissible environment. Someone may say, what if the woman makes more money than the man? Well, the issue is, every penny, every a pound or every sterling that the that the woman makes is her money and the man has no right to it that means that if she makes a hundred thousand dollars and the man makes fifty thousand dollars it is not incumbent or wajib or upon her to spend any of her money on the family it's strictly the order of the man to spend on the family if she chooses to do it out of uh, her own goodness then that's not a problem but it is obligatory upon the man to spend his money on the family and she can take the money she can put it in a pocket put it in a safe put it under the mattress she can do anything she wants with it and he has no right to it so right away the men, right away the men are saying hmm I didn't know that okay that's why we call this section misconceptions let's go to the other aspect of it and they say that a man can have up to four wives and they say this is oppression well let's talk about it yes it's true the men can have more than one wife in Islam and up to four wives. So somebody may say, well, why can't the women have four husbands? Well, firstly and foremostly, what would happen if a woman had four husbands? Who could we say is the father of her children? It would be very, very difficult to tell. It could be one, two, or it could be three, or it could be four. But likewise, the Creator created men and women in a certain fashion. And therefore, the man can have up to four wives, but the woman can have only one husband. A second issue. It is known with anybody with a calculator, and just uh, being a little bit cognizant of what's going on in the world, that there are more women than there are men. This is clear. So if you take 100 men, and there are 120 women, for each man if he took just one wife let's look at it like this we have to take out about thirty of those hundred men who don't have the physical 
or the financial means to be able to care for a wife. So now we're down to 70 men to 120 women. And then you have to take out a few more of those men who may have some type of situation where they just cannot support a wife. So let's just take another 10% away. And let's just call it, and be liberal, 60 men to 120 women. So if, if these 60 men can only have one wife, what happens to the other 60 women? That means that they have no opportunity to have a child, no opportunity to have a husband, no opportunity to have a family. But in Islam, there is no such thing as a primary wife, a secondary wife, a tertiary wife, and so on and so forth. Every wife that the man marries has equal rights, no matter if she was married to him for 10 years and the other one for 10 days. They have equal rights. They have equal rights in terms of living, equal rights in terms of how much the man spends upon them, equal rights upon everything. So this makes it very, very clear now that the man has to spend on his wives, mm -hmm, and he can have up to 